Hello everyone and it's time for some more Warcraft with your host Rurikon. So today we're going to be going over the um, the spec and rotation and whatever uh, you want to be doing when you're in heroics. So basically I changed my specs since last time because I I don't really um, I didn't really use victory rush all that much. So I in and even the healing was pretty pretty low of it and the damage in between doing a victory rush I think it's much more useful to do a devastate specifically because you're not even there to do damage you're just there to do threat and the more threat you're making the better so devastate always seems to be a better option over victory rush at least it seems to me so far I might come to a different conclusion but I still haven't had a lot of time to get this all down so anyways um, I took the points out of impending victory and I completed field dressing and I'm putting them into blitz also <clears throat> um, so basically that's been it for now um, also the glyphs I've changed them around a little I got, got rid of the um, glyph of victory rush and went for the thunderclap instead other than that it's pretty much the glyphs I told you so for the prime ones we have devastate shield slam revenge for the major ones we have sunder armor cleaving Thunderclap, and for the minor ones we have Command, Battle, and Zerker Rage. I'm also considering using the minor glyph of Intimidating Shout, because if you can get mobs to tremble in place instead of fleeing in fear, how long is this anyways? It lasts 8 seconds. So if you can get them to stay in place instead of fleeing in fear, you can almost use this as an 8 second CC, which can be quite handy in emergencies. Uh, I might consider that specifically for, for Cataclysm, because they're, they're saying that those dungeons are going to be harder. I haven't seen anything regarding that yet, so uh, in Cataclysm I might be switching that around. I mean, I'm pretty sure that um, Archaeology is going to have an effect on the glyphs you're using also, so whatever. So that's it for the spec, for the glyphs, um, and now I believe you guys wanted to see the uh, macros because a lot of people have been telling me, oh your macros don't work since 4.0, they work for me, okay? I've been checking out my macros and they still work at least for me, I'm not exactly sure if it's because you guys are on a PC version and they've done something to restrict the PC version, on my Macintosh every macro is working fine. So the first macro I'm going to show you is the Concussion Shockwave, which is basically the same as it used to be. Which is, you go over here and you got Cast Sequence Reset equals 5 Shockwave Concussion Blow. That's it. Nothing else. Works just fine. Uh, besides that, you also have the Thunder Cleave macro. Thunderclap Cleave still works just fine. Then you have my Charge macro, which does Charge, Heroic Strike, Heroic Throw. Still works just fine no problems whatsoever and I believe that's it now actually I've made uh, two new macros which are the Rencept which should be over here which is basically Intercept and Rend pretty simple and basically what it does is when you're far away from the enemies it will intercept and if you're close enough for Rend it will cast Rend and that's it uh, besides that, we also have my Revenge macro, which is over here, which is basically Revenge and Victory Rush. It doesn't work as well as it could, but it gets off a few Victory Rushes every now and then, so it's fine. It's basically more for grinding purposes than anything else, because when I'm tanking, it mostly just goes after the Revenge and pretty much hardly ever does Victory Rush, which is great by me. So, besides that, there's also the... Uh, stance dancing macro that I have, which basically, if you're in defensive stance, it will switch you to battle stance. If you're in battle stance, it will switch you to defensive. And if you're in berserker stance, it will switch you back to defensive as well. And in battle stance, I have a shortcut to go to berserker stance, and that's how I do stance dancing. So, I believe that's about it for now. So, you guys now also know all the macros that I'm using. So let's get straight down to business. You guys want to see an heroic? And last time I did the um, the the warrior heroic, you guys told me that I was doing a a really easy heroic. So this time around, 
excuse me, I'm actually going to select, which one was it? The one that was a pain in the ass, it was Halls of Reflection, I believe. Yeah, it's Halls of Reflection, and then there's also Pit of Siren, even though that's pretty simple. And, no, Pit of Siren is one of the tricky ones as well, the Forge of Souls is the one that's simple, but these are, I believe that these are the three hardest instances. I mean, I haven't played in five months, but I believe that these are it. So, let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so this instance is actually a good one to do the um, some AoE and stuff like that. So basically, for starters, I'm going to go ahead and charge this guy. Random. Thunderclap. Now they both have Ren. Now I'm going to go to Devastate. Battle Shot to get some Rage. Devastate, Shield Slam, Revenge. Devastate, Shield Slam, Revenge. Keep thunder clapping whenever possible. I'm not even using shockwave at this point, but you can also use it if you want. So these are done. Entering combat. King Variant's SI7 agents have gathered information about a private sanctum of the Lich Kings, deep within a place called the Halls of Reflection. Okay, there's the healer. I sense powerful magic hidden away within those halls. And let's magic do this. The key to destroying the scourge. Make haste, champion. Rend, thunderclap, everyone has rend, and you have pretty much solid threat. You can even back battle a little. Shockwave, everyone's stunned. Make sure that you keep cleaving and thunderclapping with the thundercleave macro. And also go for shield slam and spread some devastates around, which is also always nice. Interrupting that Shadow Bolt there, Pff, pretty simple stuff. Mm. Did they reduce the trash in this instance? Yeah, they did. There used to be a pack in here somewhere. I mean, it's even easier than before. Amazing. Didn't knew that was possible. So basically what I did there was charge one, intercept the other, and then immediately use Rend so that I could get rend on everyone here, spell reflect, interrupt one spell, and charge the guy here in the back. It's a bit messy, but you don't have to be too precise with this trash anyways. It's always tricky when you get caster trash. Now, when, you're, when you've got them all rounded up like so, you want to just keep doing uh, thunderclap, revenge, cleave, and when you get down to one target, you want to switch back to your devastate, shield, slam, revenge. And as always, heroic strike whenever you have excess rage. And now we got two more skeletons. You already know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna charge in, rend, th thunder clap. There we go. Now they both got rend, and you just go ahead and send her away. To devastate. Whoops. Got a runner there. Taunt it. Keep making your normal rotation. I mean, you guys should know by now if you're running a warrior, it's not a rotation, it's more like a priority list. Okay, so rend. Thunderclap. Everybody's got rend. Interrupt this one. Everybody should be on top of you. It's extremely important that you watch how I move. And you should be using Threat Plates because it's so easy to check out when you lose aggro for something. And it's pretty easy to get it back as well. Okay, so this is one of those caster poles which are kind of tricky. I'm just gonna go ahead and charge right in there. Shield Slam that one. Rend that one. Thunderclap. Got every single one of them. Taunt the Reaper, because it got away from me. Now get this one. It's pretty messy. And you want to just go ahead and cycle through all the targets. And make sure you always keep aggro on all of them. You see there, losing threat. Go just go ahead and taunt that. 
get back on it, go to the next one, full threat, go to the next one. When you get a uh, pull like this where they're far away from you, don't be afraid to move away from your target because these guys are basically casters and in case they're not casters, they're going to be following you anyways. So one of the main things um, about playing a warrior, uh, just as it was before, is always situational awareness, which means being aware of what's around you and reacting accordingly. So like right now, these guys are all around me, rended, thunderclapped, and they all have rend. And it just makes it so much easier to keep aggro on them. Just keep thunderclapping, and they'll never get off you. And make sure that you also pop spell reflect, because there's a lot of casters in here. And just keep thunderclapping and spreading devastates around, shield slams, revenge whenever possible. Thunderclap, cleave, all that kinds of good stuff for warrior AoE. And I'm not even doing shockwave because I'm damn near rage starved if I do make shockwave I'll lose a bunch of rage because when you get to a certain gear level you actually want to get hit it's actually pretty useful <laughs> so going for... I actually misclicked there kinda of rusty sorry about that so you actually wanna go for Ren just like I was going before and then thunderclap to spread on the Ren and make them get the debuff and this one is down and now it's time for brawn jam so everyone should know how to do this boss right now but basically you go up to him you start tanking and spanking and it's just tanking and spanking most of the time except when he makes that uh, pink stuff that chases people they should be running away from it and a lot of people don't we'll see that in a few seconds Why does he make so little damage? Now they should be killing this corrupted soul fragment, but they didn't, which means the boss gets healed up. And now everybody has to stay inside the pink stuff. Get back in, get back in, don't die, and boom, down he goes. Make sure that you grab a uh, spell reflect every now and then for the shadow bolts. And another one goes outside. Can he make it back in? Yeah, because the boss dies. I do believe that I have all 20 slot bags. Oh, but not in the bank, so fuck you. Hey. <whistles> Lucky old son. Don't need it. I think I was actually the, the only one that still doesn't have all 20 slot bags. Uh... Isn't he gonna res? Crap. I guess not. Okay. Oh, she was AFK. She had it coming then. So, charge in, run. Thunderclap to spread the love of Ren. Actually, gonna go for a shockwave here. Just for the extra damage. It's just that these monsters die so freaking fast, it barely even allows you to have any kind of a rotation on them. Okay, so here you want to be careful to make sure that your party doesn't aggro this one. But I'm pretty sure they are going to aggro it. Right? 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 No! Nice! So basically I taunted that one because I was walking backwards to it. But I was kind of expecting it anyways. So when on your single mobs you just want to do your normal Devastate, Shield, Slam, Revenge. And that's about it. You can just spam that, and down it goes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he died on boss as well, but... It was the healer's job to res him, not mine. So anyways, devastate, devastate, shield slam, revenge. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was outside your range if you ran away from the circle. Oh, you were be right back. Well, then you shouldn't. 
No way FKing with me on the instance. The host of souls. Okay, so for this one you want to use your shield, your um, spell reflect as much as possible. Ah, I just missed it there. You want to tank the boss away from these guys so that you don't take extra damage. And now you want to stop damage when he does Mirrored Soul. Okay, so Mirrored Soul is out. So you can blast away like a madman. Phantom Blast coming up. Spell Reflect. Take it. Just DPS it as hard as possible, and it's down. Recovered Reliquary Bolt. Sucks. 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 And that's about it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope it helps you tank better. As always, I am available for all the questions you guys have. I would just uh, ask you that you post them up in the website and not on YouTube because it's harder for me to track it down on YouTube. So anyways, uh, I've been getting some complaints from people that they want to see my full videos on YouTube. I've already explained why they're not on YouTube. It's because YouTube does not allow Portuguese partnerships, which basically limits me a lot on, on the length of the content that I can put up and um, lots of other stuff. So basically... Um, as long as YouTube doesn't allow Portuguese partnerships, I am really, really sorry, but I'm going to stick my stuff on Blip, which to me seems like a f much more, f a much fair, s much more fair site than YouTube is being, because that's just the way things are. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned for the next one because today I've been raiding ICC10 in hard mode with a few of my old friends, and I've got some footage from the Bloodwing. Uh, which I will be uploading soon, so see you guys on the next video.